Incognito Series Showdown cost about 500 stubs to enter, but don't you worry, if you go ahead and beat the 7 mini bosses as well as the final boss, you will actually earn your stubs back and then some. We are facing Miles Michaelis as the final boss. So I would assume that leads you to wonder who are the other Incognito Series pitchers that we will face in terms of the 7 mini bosses, and they range from all of the starting pitchers that are Incognito as well as all of the relievers and closing pitchers that are incognito as well. Inside of the player pool for the 7 mini bosses, there are a total of 10 left-handed pitchers you can face and a total of 22 right-handed pitchers you can face as well. So obviously you would think that contact and power versus right are the main attributes you are looking for. No, instead I will look for the most balanced hitter each and every single time. That way, if I have to face Kershaw, the 99 overall, or Chris Sale, or Oldis Chapman, my lineup is ready and I'm not struggling because I brought an all lefty lineup. In regards to drafting players in any round, I would highly advise you to look at the clutch rating because whenever there are runners in scoring position, that's what they use for contact and it is crucial for us to have good contact and drive runners in in order to beat these moments. When it comes to live series players, it's always important to look at the inside edge if the player does have an inside edge and see which player is the most balanced out of all of them if they are supercharged then obviously you're picking up that player that is supercharged in regards to perks it depends on your play style if you're someone that's very aggressive down but not out is going to be crucial for you if you are someone that wants an active perk at all times then hero time is going to be the perk for you here we do not have either of them Rally time is a good perk as well, and you can use it to your advantage, and we will discuss that a little bit later on. We don't get hero time, but we do get down but not out. Before facing any mini boss, make sure that you always equip your perks and use the ones that will be most beneficial to you. If the game was tied, then rally time has no use for us, and we would use another perk if we had another one available. Always manage your squad to put your best hitters as well, since you never have to play defense. And I would look to add one speedy runner just in case you need to pinch run at any moment. Aiming for 30,000 subscribers before the start of June. Can we get there? It's up to you. Also hit that like button, notification bell, and check out the description for the Twitch and more links. This right here is the most crucial tip I've ever given you inside of Showdown. So make sure you guys listen to this carefully. So you see we're facing Hal Newhauser. I have never faced Hal Newhauser before, and you most likely have never faced Hal Newhauser before. So you want contact and power versus lefties to be at the top of the line. Lineup. But most importantly, I would love to get some reps against Hal Newhauser. That way, I would feel a little bit more comfortable whenever I have to do that specific moment. So, if you back out and go to the home screen of MOB the show and then go to the paintbrush where it says create, you can actually go into roster control. Once inside of roster control, we can search up by first name Hal. And when we search up by first name Hal and press enter, it shows us that Hal Newhauser belongs to the mid-century groundbreakers. That is important. Why? Because we can actually practice against him before entering the showdown. Now, if you wanted to make your squad look exactly like the showdown squad before entering into custom practice, you could go instantly into the Baltimore Orioles and press on player movement. And then you go ahead and look for the legends that you have on your squad or whichever players you have on your squad. For example, if we had Bryce Harper and we wanted to add Bryce Harper, we would just go ahead and switch him for a pitcher. It doesn't matter. And then in order to put him inside the lineup for when we go into custom practice or whichever players, you go into lineups and then you find Bryce Harper on the bench and you put him wherever you want to place him. Once you do all that, you are going to back out and you are going to go all the way down to custom practice. And if you did not know this already, if you go throughout the teams, you will find the groundbreakers. And who plays in the groundbreakers? Yes, that's Hal Newhauser. You will also find the boomers and the beast. They have the legend teams available for you to go ahead and go versus. And if a pitcher is a free agent, then just go to the free agent place and add them to a team and then face that team so you get to face that pitcher. We're gonna pick the Dodgers and we're gonna enter into custom practice. Inside of custom practice, just press down on the touchpad 
and then switch the pitcher to Hal Newhauser. Once you have Hal Newhauser as your pitcher, you can go ahead and back out. And now you can also go to options, go to gameplay and change the difficulty to veteran or change the difficulty to higher than veteran if you would like to in order to make the pitches feel a little bit slower whenever you enter the showdown and you get yourself practice. And if you went ahead and also equip the squad to be the exact same squad that you're using in showdown, then you are going to be Okay. Before returning to the showdown, another big piece of advice that I have to give you all is whenever you do go ahead and alter the rosters in your favor, either your showdown squad is inside one of the rosters or you went ahead and added a free agent pitcher to a team, you got to make sure to save the roster. That way, whenever you re-enter Diamond Dynasty and then go out of Diamond Dynasty to practice against the next pitcher, you can just load into whichever roster it was that you created and then add the player because every time you enter Diamond Dynasty, they will go ahead and reset the rosters to the default ones. When I say use rally time to your advantage, is, this is what I mean here. We started with a runner on second base. I went ahead and hit a double with Nelson Cruz. Yes, I could have scored the run and still have been trailing, which would have been perfect and rally time would have been activated, but let's say it was within one. If that runner scores, rally time is no longer active for me as a perk and we lose that exit velocity boost. So if we were trailing one instead of two, the smarter decision would be to keep the runner on third and second until you hit that base hit or double or whatever it is that you do end up hitting in order to drive both of them in while keeping that perk active at all times also before you even draft ever make sure you back out of the draft and see who you are facing next we're facing Scott Barlow next so that means we're facing a right-handed pitcher and inside that moment we are going to be trailing by two runs with a runner on first base so what would we do here we would go ahead and pick up the best power and contact hitter against righties that also has amazing clutch. Obviously, Brandon Belt is the better power hitter, but my play style is I do a lot better with good contact hitters. And finally, we get to add hero time as the perk and rally time will also be active with it. So we're gonna do whatever we can to make sure they're both active until we score the winning run. Usually the rule of thumb is whenever there is a runner at third, it is your sixth hitter. Whenever there is a runner at second, it is your seventh hitter. And whenever there is a runner at first, it is your eighth hitter. But I've seen it randomize itself and some have told me it has randomized itself. But for this moment right here, where you're trailing two runs, 16 outs remaining, and there is a runner on second, it is going to be your seventh hitter running. So what you can do is, you can find in your extended bench or in your current bench, whichever of the two it is you decide to do, a really fast runner. And you put that really fast runner as your seventh hitter. You go ahead and replace him with the lowest overall on your team. That way, whenever that seventh hitter comes up to hit after he scored a run, you just replace him with the next best available hitter on your bench. Like I told you all, this can be very scary. We are drafting right now, and I see that Chris Sale is the next person we're facing. We're trailing by a run, and we need to take the lead before recording 10 outs. That's not going to be any scrub Chris Sale. That's going to be 99 overall Chris Sale that just came in the game. So what do we need? We need great contact and power versus left, as well as someone that has great clutch. I am going to take DJ LeMahieu here, and I'm going to take down but not out. I probably won't equip this one since I'm rarely in two strike counts. But if you are someone that waits until there are two strikes, then obviously this would be a lot better than the silver version of it. And since we have rally time activated we won't score a runner from third unless we know for sure that we can score the runner from second base or first base as well showdown scoots magoots we actually had our seventh hitter 
be our runner at first base instead of our sixth hitter or instead of our eighth hitter it was actually our seventh so it's randomized right now i don't know why mlb the show decided to do that but very strange also if the audio sounds off at any point i apologize for it i was not recording with the mic where it's normally placed so i'm not sure what's going on this one we had eight outs and there was a runner on second base the runner on second base was actually my fifth hitter so if the outs and the runners on base if the missions are the same and they're just different pitchers then i'm here to help you place that speedy runner at with at whichever batting order position it is but be careful because it could be random for you as well hopefully by following these tips you will be able to get all the way to the final boss down 17 to 20 but hey if you are at the second to last boss or third to last boss and you like your team already and feel like you don't want to take any more risks in order to get to miles you can go ahead and skip the last two or skip the final one and head straight into miles and make sure you just equip the best perks that are going to help you out the most rally time and hero time of course will help you out the most since there will be a larger deficit and in your squad make sure you stack it up with power versus right or left-handed hitters whichever way you went ahead and drafted that got you all the way up there if you did end up enjoying today's content please hit that like button or subscribe button notification bell aiming for 30,000 subscribers before the start of june have a blessed day and night stay positive stay safe stay blessed Check out the description and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.